well, we control the world. That's the best thing. Um, <laughs> We're sneaky and we're manipulative and we know how to control it without them knowing that we're controlling it. Without them knowing that we're controlling it. Without them knowing that we're controlling it. Looking upon these frail creatures, one would not think that they could contain such power. One could rule the universe with it. You must find them for me and destroy them. Greetings, it's Adam Noeve once again. I am back. I believe before I delve into the main topic of the video that I've intended, I think it's important I offer a small explanation of why I don't post to YouTube nearly as frequently as I should. This is, I have found over the years, perhaps the most abysmal, depressing, and hopeless, and bottomless topic on the entire internet. I think that the uh, issue of women, of hypergamy, our exhausting cultural war that is a result of this conflict between the sexes and their two utterly opposing ways of thinking and their um, completely different brains, the different interpretations of reality, one being logical and empirical and the other being emotion uh, idealism uh, hyper consumption over socialized it's just been talked about and talked about and talked about for years and bordering on decades now and you know obviously i started my youtube channel uh, a couple of years ago uh maybe 2017 um, and I actually had a YouTube channel before that where I talked about anarcho-capitalism. Even years before that, even before Trump was elected. So I've actually been on YouTube for a long time, longer than most people think, because I don't talk about it. It just seems, it really does seem pointless. I feel like almost everything that has been said, that has been able to be said about this issue, has probably been said. I feel as if the the borders, the the territory, so to speak, the front lines between the two factions being men and women, and obviously there are men on the women's side and women on the men's side, but it, the, the battle lines are drawn generally by female and male cognition. I feel as if we have surpassed the recruitment phase, sort of the, 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 the counting of the heads drawing the lines between like who's who, who's on whose side, and the, uh, the in-between territory. Uh, the demilitarized zone has vastly shrunk to an insignificant proportion. I don't know how many more YouTube videos anyone can make, or Twitter posts, or Facebook posts. Uh, I don't know how much more we can say. Um, that hasn't been said already about this absolutely abysmal state of affairs. And what really amounts to the collapse of our civilization, the collapse of our country, the collapse of everything that we've known, of all social order. And there was a time I thought that was an exaggeration myself. It really isn't, though. It really isn't, though. How do you, where, where, where do you see this going? Women seem to accumulate more and more and more power. Even though they are fragile, helpless creatures, at least out alone in the wild. And yet somehow, despite men being the stronger sex, the more cognitive sex, arguably I'd even say slightly more intelligent just through evolutionary adaptation, the more creative sex and yet somehow Women always get their way. Women have, no matter how great our numbers have grown, whether you're MGTOW, whether you participate in incel stuff, uh, whether you are TFL, whether you're men's rights, whether you're one of those masculine Brad bros on the 
the manly man, right, who is actually married. And I have no idea how men are even married still to this day. It puzzles me. Women always seem to get what they want. I've, I've seen it too many times. A YouTube channel, a, a men's YouTube channel with a solid, solid message speaking the truth. Rising in the ranks, rising in the algorithms, gaining tens of tens of thousands of, of YouTube subscribers. And all of it gone in a snap with one ban. They relegate us to the ghettos of the internet where nobody else looks, no one else knows. Normies don't go there. Normies don't go on Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey. Sure, I, I could see those those platforms growing by slight amounts, but we just can't we can't catch up. Women always seem to get their way. And that is how I measure female power. And that is a natural segue into the topic of today. Is a brief analysis of female power. You see, I um I think People who know what I do outside YouTube, um, people who follow me around probably, I might have some stalkers at this point. People who follow me around know that I was on the Propertarian chat for a couple of months, um, ever since the July 4th debacle, and I made a video on that. I was curious about Propertarianism, and I uh, joined the Telegram chat and participated for some time, but... Uh, there was definitely a rift that occurred very suddenly, and I was very shocked by it, to be, uh, to be perfectly frank. It really caught me off guard. I didn't think that I would find this massive disagreement between myself and other people associated with propertarianism, and I identified that differently than propertarianism it's, itself. The one intellectual associated with P, and honestly on the right at this point, that I really could say that I have the most intellectual, like, overlaps with uh is kurt himself um eli is also pretty based <laughs> keep women uh what, what, what does eli say eli Harmon say uh, a civilization's survival depends on its ability to keep its women barefoot pregnant and in the kitchen uh i'm sorry youtube algorithm but that's entirely true and yet and yet despite this being an acknowledged reality among the P people, um, they didn't seem to approve of my, uh, <laughs> to what normies and feminists would probably on looking see. It would, to, to, to normies and feminists looking on this little conflict I had and kind of still ongoing have with the P people is it looks more like to them, it just looks like one shade of sexism belugering another shade of sexism for not being sexist enough. <laughs> eh, that's not entirely wrong. And I think the fate of our civilization depends on men not being ashamed to say something like that. To uh, defend against the onslaught, the, the social emotional onslaught of being ostracized with accusations of eh, sexism, racism, xenophobia, you have to be based. You cannot accept the enemy's religion, and those are the sins of their imaginary goddess, as you can see on the uh, this the the YouTube backdrop I created. There is a goddess staring down at Lucifer falling from heaven. That's right, my version of the uh, of the old Bible fan fiction story of the dragon of revelation falling from heaven is a little different than what's written in the holy book. Because I think God at this point has become a woman. But that is a topic for another video. Or is it? Maybe I'll talk about it here a little more. But yeah, I think that men need to embrace basically being the antichrists of this new world feminist religion. That we need to accept being cast out of heaven this feminist utopia the globalists are trying to create that is while obviously not visibly ruled by women women don't have power being enthroned being queens 
women's power comes from being in the background, from having their reproductive and consumptive interests constantly met through hypergamy. They want a society that will fulfill that feminine instinct and reject the male instinct of social order and justice and reciprocity for the proprietarians and guys on the right who are married. See, I don't, this is why I don't really trust married men as much as I do guys who are already single and ostracized for life like me. All married guys, even the proprietarian married guys, they're just a little cucked. And I think we have a word for that. Those are trad cucks. At least they smell a bit trad cucky to me. Because in there, invariably, you do have to compromise with women in order to secure a relationship with her. You do. I accept that. It's just that the compromise that the world religion of feminism the world religion of hypergamy has established now the norm is that men give up far more in the compromise than is conscionable and that's one of the ways that women have power over men i don't see how propertarian guys can say things like keeping bare women barefoot pregnant in the kitchen but then when i propose that women don't want monogamy Women don't want the social order that men establish, that feminists are right, I think. I think feminists are right when they do say things like marriage is oppressive to women, motherhood is oppressive to women. I think that most women who are snared into this cult quite easily, because at this point our entire civilization has been converted to that cult, um... Women want this. Women women don't want monogamy. They don't. They are not suited toward monogamy. They don't want it. And women will actively, are actively, have always actively, and will continue to always actively, no matter whether the right wins its great civil war with the globalists and we establish propertaria and some new polities based on masculine uh, cognition uh, and formal logic and lying is outlawed are established like women will always resent monogamy because it is in her biological nature and sure you might say like well men also resent monogamy as well men also cheat men also subvert monogamy I mean the social order that we have right now does benefit a small handful of so-called chads at the highest echelons of power. Okay, what kind of men do women want? What do they say they want on all their dating profiles? Women say that they want a man with a college degree, a master's degree, more educated than her, makes more money than her. Uh, women don't want humble blue collar guys. They want someone like an engineer, making six figures, possibly more, uh, definitely millionaires. And of course, as the black pill community has thoroughly, thoroughly established as scientific fact, women want a man who is good looking. They want all of this. Hypergamy is a great black hole that cannot be satisfied. Yet another video topic that I will cover in more detail somewhere else. I don't believe that hypergamy can ever be satisfied, which nullifies our need as men, our need to ever really compromise with women since women have demands that cannot be satisfied their their demands to us should be largely irrelevant okay you know i think you're familiar with the old tale of the one beautiful young girl being betrothed to an ugly old man who just happened to be rich and the family liked and it's a lot more convenient but she's really in love with the younger chad dude bro who is part of the enemy family, a Romeo, the Romeo and Juliet situation. I think we have that ingrained in our minds that that is, that's what all arranged marriages are. And again, that's feminism and women are the culprit of that. And frankly, you have to believe women when they say that they hate most arranged marriages. Women's are the ones who rebel against arranged marriages and traditionalism. 
that's what feminism was about. I've had debates with the propertarians, propertarians regarding this, and well, their response is that, well, feminism was invented by a, <coughs> a small minority, a small faction of foreigners, we'll call them, the, uh, the chosen people. <clears throat> That it's foreign influence and dual citizens who have concocted this plot and shifted themselves into the highest echelons of power and are orchestrating female hypergamy against the men of our civilization and our countries. Okay. Again, like I don't dispute this. This is clearly, you can see this with your own eyeballs. Yes, that's happening. But <laughs> that definitely veers into cope territory when you blame the reason why every girlfriend that you can get breaks up with you. And then at this point, any girlfriend that you can get is just too unconscionably ugly, fat, has children. I mean, to blame all of our crappy, crappy circumstances, not just in dating, not just in sexual relations with the other, other side of our species on a small group of individuals, okay. Okay, that's that veers on absurd to me. I think uh, really that's just more telling of where women's loyalties lie. Why do women use their powers of seduction, their beauty? Why, why are they doing this? Why are they destroying our society? Why are they destroying something that men built and men love? To realize this, you have to understand what monogamy is. You see, monogamy is the pillar of civilization. Civilization itself, whether it be Western civilization or any civilization of the past that has developed beyond swinging in the trees and eating bananas, originates from monogamy. That is the key ingredient of any civilized society. The two sexes of our species putting aside their natural polygamous impulses to come together and cooperate and subdue their own sexual impulses in order to achieve things. Whether that simply be survival in the, in the vast deserts of the savannah or farming, uh, putting your mind to other things other than trying to acquire a mate. Giving each man a female mate frees him from competing with all of the other males, especially the alpha male, for sexual gratification and for reproduction. It guarantees each male is able to have access to sex and he can focus on developing everything else that is awesome about humanity. Now, I've read, I, I'm going to reference two books. One is called Sex and Culture by J.D. Unwin. And the hypothesis, rigorously proven, is that Every single civilization, anthropologically, every single civilization has been monogamous, and every civilization that falls, and every civilization, every tribe that fails to develop just beyond tree swinging, has failed to, its members have failed to repress their natural polygamous sex urges. Polygamy is a culture destroyer. And the second book was on Kurt Doolittle's to read list uh, called Marriage and Civilization How Monogamy Made Us Human by William Tucker. Monogamy benefits low-status males, but it disadvantages low-status females. What does this mean? So this is why this is why feminists, this is why women, I believe it's women's biological incentive to undermine monogamy and therefore undermine civilization itself and destroy all of the accomplishments, scientific, religious, spiritual, engineering, every single feat of man, our cities, our, our, our countries and empires, all of them crumbled by, and, and women are incentivized to do this. Okay, why do women think that civilization, especially, especially Western civilization, and those who are cognitively effeminate, but that, you know, that, that, that those are women, women do not like civilization because it's monogamous, because monogamy allows low status males access to sex, without competing with the rest of the tribe, and so they can build a civilization. But women, okay, humans are naturally, biologically, are a polygamous species. 
I mean, you can see this in, in our closest ancestor, chimpanzees, uh, where chimpanzees will they will have a mating frenzy. Every single male will mate with every single female, and an alpha male will typically have more of his way with the other with the other female apes. And this is even more so in like gorillas, where you know you have many males competing against an alpha male bully, and women seem to prefer this behavior. And you look in like, say, for example, in actual human contemporary cultures like Islam and Mormonism, women largely consent to a polygamous structure. Very few women. You have some books that, that, that come out saying, oh, how I survived polygamy. Okay, some women, some women don't like it. But I mean, how does it assemble itself in the first place? Well, women seem to have a natural inclination to to gather themselves in the harem of an alpha male. That seems to be when, when you're liberated, when you're sexually liberated, this is what women do. This is what women prefer. And in the red pill, it says women would rather share a male, a high status male. They would rather share him and be slightly miserable having to share him than to ever be saddled down with a beta. And they would rather be alone still, even if they can't get a Chad, a woman would rather be alone than have to saddle down with a beta who is basically an average guy. And even now, it's Chad Light level. Guys who are six or even seven, and even eights have hard, a hard time. You have to be nine or a ten to have your total sway in the sexual marketplace. Now, monogamy benefits low-status men because they don't have to – their lives aren't brutal, miserable, and short, as Thomas Hobbes would say. Then You don't have these bachelor herds being cast out – because they can no longer have families, they're cast out, cast out of society entirely. They can't really participate. What's the point if all the women are being hoarded by a single male? But low-status women benefit from the destruction of monogamy because they get the alpha male. So it's not surprising that the motives of men are in conflict. Most men, most men are low-status, are in conflict with ambitions of low status women. Low status women always want to hook up into the harem of Chad. And low status men are fighting a war against women's urges and against women themselves to stop that. Obviously the, the proprietarians I've talked to don't like don't necessarily deny that. And yet there's still this delusion of compatibilism. Okay, like I understand, you know, men are systematic and they have one set of traits that allows one side of human survival and women are adapted to be empathetic, empathic uh, and rear children, etc. for another side of survival. Okay. Tradcucks don't seem to want to admit this great conflict of interest. What I think the the p guys i argue with trad cucks generally don't want to acknowledge or don't see because they're inured in marriages and they're inured with women is that uh feminism isn't just bad for women i mean i guess it is but what they don't want to see is that feminism is the collectivization of hypergamy it is the collectivization and the politicization of women's will to go back into the alpha gorilla harem. It's difficult to accept and it's a hard truth, but I believe that most women because of this are genuinely not interested in men. If you look at the numbers, it, it, they only swipe one out of a hundred times on Tinder and they only go out on dates one in a hundred times. And like if you don't want... If you don't want dating examples, then just look to the human past where DNA evidence from, I think, the Arizona, an Arizona university shows that only about 5 or 6% of men historically have reproduced. Most women don't like most men. Femin feminism isn't just a crap test. It's not just you know women testing men to see whether they'll actually you know overcome women's games and their and their tricks to you know subdue and conquer them no i genuinely sincerely believe that when women join the feminist cult they do not like men they do believe most men are garbage that is hypergamy that's why women say it 
And a lot of guys I argue with just have too much pride to be able to admit that. I think a lot of it's pride. Sure, some of them have a standard de- uh, IQ standard deviation above mine. Fine, I get it. I might be a midwet, but I can still see the cruel reality that imposing monogamy back onto women, sending us back to the Victorian age or the medieval age, will be good for men, but women will lose everything that they have taken from men. It may seem like a bleak and controversial view, but I believe that a man's dark, a dark age is a woman's golden age. This is a golden age for women. They can do everything that they want. They get everything that they want. Everyone around them, the whole world validates them. Even when they complain, of course they still complain. Don't rich people always complain, even though they're rich? I mean, women are rich in sexual capital, as well as all other resources. And in the same vein, a woman's dark age is a man's golden age. The only way that we will be able, that men will be able to take back our civilization and overcome this dark age that's falling upon us is to basically accept our antagonism to women's reproductive imperative. I don't think most women are going to be willing to compromise. I don't know if they even have the systematic thinking to be able to understand what a compromise is. They just want, want, want. That's actually something P guys could agree with me on. You know, you can't convince a woman to be logical. Yeah. So then what makes you like, you know, what makes you think she'll, she'll just agree to go back to monogamy? No, no, no. Women want polygamy. They want this. This is what they want. They want this dark age. This is what they've fought for. We should sincerely believe women when they say that they think that civilization itself, because they say monogamy is oppressive, they think civilization itself is oppressive. So I just say we accept our role as men. We should accept our role as conquerors over women. It's it's dark. It's bleak. You don't want to be the villain. But that's why Lucifer is falling from heaven. And the goddess is gazing upon him with radioactive eyes and victory. Because if we don't accept our role, women's hypergamous narrative, we, we won't win.